Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're going to be talking about stick welding polarity. Now, what is polarity in stick welding? Well, it has to do with whether you're connecting the electrode or your welding rod to the positive side of the circuit or to the negative side of the circuit or to alternating current where it switches back and forth between the two. Those are your options and we're going to walk through each one and when you might want to use it. Let's start with DC electrode positive. Now that's the term they use, DCEP stands for DC electrode positive. Now this used to be called reverse polarity and thank goodness they don't do that too much anymore because it's hard to remember. But DC electrode positive is the most common way to run welds. And when would you want to run it? Well most of the time and I'll tell you why. When you have a welding arc, on the uh, negative side the electrons are leaving and they end up on the positive side. Well along with that you end up taking about 60-70% of your heat to the positive side. Now you might be wondering, wait a second, if my electrode is positive, why do I want to send most of the heat there? The heat goes into your rod, but what's happening here? Your rod is melting off and sending metal back into the workpiece. So the metal going into the workpiece takes the heat back in there with it. So you really get both and it kind of balances out to be honest. Uh, between the two, but still with electrode positive, you're going to end up getting that heat put back in there and you'll typically get a little bit deeper penetration and that's usually a good thing. So DC electrode positive, that's the go-to that I use most of the time and, and the general recommendation. However, a lot of electrodes can run alternating current or DC electrode negative. So while we're talking about DC, let's talk about electrode negative for a minute. So if you connect your electrode to the negative side of the circuit, what's happening is your about 60-70% of your heat is going directly into your part. And the result there is that you have a little bit shallower penetration than if you're heating that rod uh, up and then you know, putting the, the material in there and uh, that can be useful if you're welding really thin tubing. I haven't really experimented with that a whole lot. I think maybe next time I'm welding something really thin I'll give it a try. Um, but that is an option there to run electrode negative or uh, they used to call it straight polarity. Again, I'm glad they don't use those terms anymore, but uh, you can run your electrode connected to the negative side if you're having trouble burning through on uh, really thin material and see if that helps you out. Now the third option is called alternating current and that's where you switch between positive and negative uh, many times per second. Now why would you want to run alternating current? Well the first reason is that that's all that your welder can do. So if you have a buzz box like this is my Lincoln tombstone here. I love this machine. I actually had an old one. I never should have gotten rid of that but I was trying to clear out some space and you know I got rid of it and I ended up picking up a new one here because uh, they're, they're just really fun to run. You get a nice smooth arc. I really like them. In fact, my grandpa, I remember, he had an old Sears welder and it had the little taps where you'd have to plug the cable into different, uh, different terminals there to be able to uh, get your current selection and he made some beautiful wood stoves with that. All he had really was an oxyacetylene torch and that old buzz box and he could make some good stuff. But that's one of the main reasons that you'd run it. And as far as your result, you're going to get something with penetration typically in between the electrode negative and electrode positive, which is just fine. Nothing wrong with that. Now the other reason that you might want to run alternating current, and this isn't uh, you know too big of a deal, usually is uh, you can avoid a phenomenon that's called arc blow. Now arc blow is when you're welding along and towards the end of your weld you'll have uh, an electromagnetic field that'll pull your arc out and you'll kind of lose control of your puddle. And if you hold a good tight arc you can usually keep a handle on it so I, I haven't really used alternating current as a solution for that before but it is an option because you're less likely to have arc blow with alternating current than with uh, direct current or DC. So uh, the acronyms for those you'll often see DCEP for DC electrode positive, DCEN for DC electrode negative, and just AC for alternating current. So now that we've talked about a lot of the theory here, let's go ahead and try a little experiment. And what we'll do here is I've got a quarter inch plate 
and I have a machine that I can change between direct current and alternating current. And so I'm going to run the same settings on the same machine on the same plate on direct current electropositive, alternating current, and direct current electronegative, and we'll see what kind of a difference we see uh, in the weld profiles, and then we'll cut it apart and we'll look at how the penetration went. So, in between each of these runs, I also cooled the plate off with water and dried it thoroughly to make sure that the plate wasn't preheated, and that contributed to some of the difference uh, here and there. Now here I am running the DC electrode positive weld, and you can see I've got a nice weld pool, it's going along and running pretty smooth here with this 6013 1 8 inch electrode. And uh, really not, not a whole lot to look at there. Now here switching to alternating current, you can hear that buzz, do you hear that buzz? That's the, the signature of running alternating current, and that's why they call those old machines buzz boxes, right? Because they, they made that sound. and. Uh, here it's running at 60 hertz, which is the same frequency that at least here in the United States, the electricity coming out of your wall outlet is. And so that's why they output uh, alternating current at that frequency. And uh, that went pretty well, not a whole lot different. Now let's look at DC electrode negative. And the one thing to notice here is um, in, in hindsight, looking at the footage, I ended up running a little bit faster, uh, just barely, than the other two, uh, despite my efforts to keep it consistently, but the rod was burning off just a, a little bit faster here, and so um, I think that can contribute to the uh, reduced penetration. However, I got a, a pretty similar bead profile with each one of these. They all look to run uh, in a pretty similar way. The bead profiles look pretty similar here. And uh, we'll go ahead and put it on the bandsaw here and chop it apart. And I just took a, a random cross section. Now, if you were to be more scientific about this, you'd run multiple welds with each setup and then take multiple cross sections at each weld. But we're just going to do one here today and see what we learn. Now, I'm polishing it down with a grinder and some uh, little uh, sanding wheels here to, to get it polished down to about a 600 grit. And then I'm going to put some uh, solution on it and what this is is it's nitric acid mixed with alcohol and you know I wouldn't necessarily uh, recommend doing this unless you've had so, some training and experience with chemicals um, however this will etch and reveal where the weld has uh, penetrated into the base material because the weld metal will corrode a little differently than the base metal with the solution on it so after letting this sit for a minute, I'll go ahead and clean it off. And if you look real close here, you can see over here with DC electrode positive, we got a little bit more uh, deeper penetration there than we did with the others. And over on electrode negative, it was uh, shallower penetration. And with alternating current, it was somewhere here in the middle. Now, the other thing to notice is over here with the electrode negative side, it is heaped up a little bit and there's even a little bit of undercut there. So it may have to do with the cross section that I took or with the overall welding technique um, there. But also you can see the shape in, of the penetration is definitely, you know, just shallower overall. So I, th I think the theory uh, stands to reason here. Um, Anyway, so what's the, the takeaway from this? Just remember in general, if you're running DC, you're gonna run DC electrode positive for general purpose work, but if you're running something really thin and your rod will uh, permit it, I'd go ahead and you know give DC electrode negative a try. I'm gonna give it a try next time I weld something thin. So anyway, hopefully this helped to explain a little bit of the differences between uh, polarity when you're stick welding and uh, if you haven't tuned in before, my name is Tim. I'm a welding engineer and I make these videos for my side hustle shop to share some of the things that I've learned along the way to hopefully help you out. So if you like this, go ahead and hit that like and let me know down below and the subscribe and we'll see you next time.